I know a lot of people have things they want to accomplish, goals they have set. And, you know, a lot of times people have difficulty accomplished because of procrastination. You have this big to-do list, all this stuff you want to get to, but either you get distracted or you put it off and you never really accomplish your goals because you procrastinate and you wait to the last minute to do stuff. And that can really be a detriment to your ability to generate income and accomplish your goals. Then you end up being a broke ass motherfucker indefinitely. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I'm going to show you right now how to eliminate procrastination from your life forever. The very first thing we need to do is look at the actual anatomy of procrastination. So let's say you have a task that you need to accomplish. Boom. Let's look at a chart of different tasks or needs to accomplish. Top of this is high value, meaning you're going to get a lot out of this task. Out of accomplishing this, you're going to get a lot out of it. But then there's some tasks that you won't get a lot out of. Boom. And then you can have actually high confidence in your ability to accomplish that goal. Or you can have low confidence in your ability to accomplish that goal. Now, here's the thing. If you're in this quadrant, like you don't think you can accomplish it and it's low value, well, you're not going to do that anyway, right? That's kind of stupid. So we'll ignore that. Let's say you have high confidence in your ability to accomplish this thing, but it, the reward is going to be low, right? Well, some people might do that, but they're really just settling. You, you've all been there, right? Maybe there was this girl you really liked and she was like a nine or a 10, but you didn't believe that you can get her. Your current girlfriend who's like a four or five or some shit, like you settled for her. All right, that's probably what your daddy did. That's why you look the way you look. So we got to change this, <laughs> introduce some beauty into your bloodline. Let's say you have high confidence in the goal and your ability to accomplish it and it's high value where you're gonna do that thing, All right? This is where people procrastinate when it's something that's high value, but they have low confidence in their ability to accomplish it. So what we need to do is improve your confidence in your ability to actually do this thing. And the main reason people don't accomplish their goals is because their standards are too low. What do I mean by that? Well, think about all the stuff that you wanted to accomplish in your life that you did not accomplish. Was it things you wanted or things that you had to have? I know the answer. If you had to have that shit, you would have it, right? Somebody put a gun to your head and said you had to do it. Literally, you would do it. So that's part one. But let's say you have that. How do you ensure that you're going to actually accomplish it so you have more confidence? There's an analogy I always give for this. Let's say there's a bug in your house. You got a little bug in there. Ugh. You know, the house I grew up when I was a little kid, I remember one of the games we used to play. One of my early memories is we used to run around crushing the roaches on the wall. All right. I grew up in the hood, man. South side of Chicago. Anyway, let's say there's a bug in your house. I don't have to do that out now because I don't even think the bugs can get up here. I think the air is too high at the in the penthouse. The altitude may fuck up a bug's respiratory system. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bugs don't have respiratory systems, but the, the shit that they got, I don't think they can breathe up here. Plus, you got to have a key to get in the elevator. I got my own private elevator. I don't think a bug doesn't have a, a fob to open the <laughs> elevator. They couldn't get there. Anyway, but let's say there's a bug in your house. That's realistic. So you could get a fly swatter and try to squat this thing. The thing is, you might hit it, but you might miss. But at least you try. That's how people go after their goals. They do what they think will accomplish the goal. They put in the amount of effort that they think will accomplish the goal. But it's another level. Let's say instead of that, you just fucking bomb the whole building. If you do that, you'll definitely kill the buck. That may be extreme, but it's an analogy, dumbass. All right, look, look dipshit, it's an analogy. I'm not telling you to bomb your buildings because you see a fly. Right, it's an analogy. So most people do, they put in enough effort to accomplish the goal. What you need to do is put in the amount of effort that will make failure impossible, right? You wanna make failure impossible. So think about your goal that you wanna accomplish and think what amount of effort would I have to put in to make failure impossible? So if we were really having this discussion about the bug, especially if it's a roach, yeah, you, even if you do kill that roach, once you've seen one, you got mad roaches, man. You got an infestation. So you got to fumigate the house, call an exterminator, some shit like that. I remember, you know, my freshman year in college, I had a lot of pimples. I was like 17. I was fucking face full of pimples, man. I looked like you and shit. And then over the summer, I wanted to fix it, but I didn't just like go to the CVS and buy a bunch of shit off the counter. I went to a dermatologist, <laughs> a fucking skin doctor and said, yo, give me whatever you got. She gave me some pills, some special soaps, and I fixed it. 
You know, like I went to a fucking pro. That's what you should do. I put in the amount of effort that made failure impossible. I came back with perfectly clear skin, had clear skin ever since. You know, cause I, I put in the amount of effort that make failure impossible. That's just an example, but you get what I'm saying. So you want to think about that. What would make failure impossible? And then, hey, now you'll have confidence if you did that. And then you'll be less likely to procrastinate on the goal. However, there's another part to it. You got this thing you want to accomplish. Boom. We already know it's going to be valuable or else you wouldn't did it. You already got confidence. But here's the thing. The, the thing that may be holding you back now is it's not fun and the time because you may come up with a plan you're like fuck this shit's gonna take forever and you motherfuckers are impatient and that's because a lot of you guys are young i looked at the analytics on my youtube you guys are fucking children right and that's cool so a year seems like a long time for you because you only had a fucking few years right so your concept of time is warped a year two years seems like for fucking ever <laughs> for you and in order to fix the time thing all right, we're going to attack this one at a time. You need to understand how it works. So this line represents results. This line represents time. And sometimes what we expect is time to go uh, linear, right? So we expect we put in an hour of work, we get an hour of progress. And we expect it to be like that. Because that's how it works if you work like a fucking nine to five job. You get fucking you work an hour, you make fucking... $15 or whatever. But real success is not linear. It usually works on an exponential curve, meaning in the beginning, you won't see a lot of progress and it'll be like that for a long time. And then at some point, the tide starts to shift. And then next thing you know, you start to get even better results than you might have planned, right? This is what's called an exponential. This is like an exponential curve, but it starts off low. When you're in here, this is when people quit or they might start something and then give up because it's not happening fast enough because they expected these kind of results. They expected linear progress. And this is the zone where people tend to quit. However, if you would have kept going, you would have hit your stride at some point and the results would have actually been better than you expected. And you just need to keep that in mind. The results would be actually better than you expect if you stick to it. You know, you got to understand that success is exponential. It's not linear. So that will help you with your time. If you can make it more enjoyable, then you won't have the same apprehension when it comes to attacking the task, if you can actually enjoy it. So how do we make it more fun? What I do, is I do something called the list of hate. So I want you to make a list, do it in your phone. That's a good place for it. Use Apple notes, or if you got an Android, use fucking dork notes, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Something that you have access to easily call the list of hate and what you want to do is write down every person who's hated on you who shitted on you who talked shit about you who tried to stop you women who cheated on you you know what i'm saying dudes who stole your girl i'm gonna be on these guys list i'm just playing i wouldn't fuck your girl <laughs> you ain't rich <laughs> bitch who fuck you i wouldn't fuck the bitches you would fuck man is you crazy i digress my standards are higher than that Anyway, you make a list of all the, make that list of hate. And every time you feel like procrastinating, look at that list, man. And just know that when you fucking procrastinate, when you put off what you're supposed to do, the haters win. The haters win. They would love to see you not work out. There's nothing they would like more. In fact, if you don't accomplish your goals, they wasn't hating on you. They were just telling the truth. <laughs> like if they said you were going to fail and you failed, it wasn't hate. It was just an accurate assessment of the situation. You're either proving them right or you're proving them wrong. And I think about that all day. Am I proving them right or am I proving them wrong? And that what that does is, though, I get a lot of joy out of that. And like, no, when I start attacking my goals, getting after it, working harder, I'm like, mm, I'm going to punish the haters with the success. Now, some guy is thinking right now, typing, you shouldn't do it for other people. You should do it for you. Shut up, dumbass. You're doing it for you. We're just using the hate <laughs> as a tool to utilize during certain situations. So every time you're supposed to do something and you feel like procrastinating, break out the list of hate. I'm not telling you to walk around angry and shit. I'm not telling you to become Darth Vader. I'm just telling you to use this tool when necessary. But then you also need a list of great. What's the list of great? I'm glad you asked. Pretend there's a version of you who already accomplished all the goals that you want to accomplish. He had the body you want. He had the business you want. He had the girl you want. He had the life you want. Write a list of all the attributes and qualities that he would have had to have to accomplish that. What time does he wake up? Does he skip his workouts? Does he track his macros? Is he working hard? Does he play video games and jag off all day? What does he do? Write down that list. And you look at your list of hate and list of great every morning and every time you feel like procrastinating. I start my day off with a list of hate and list of great. Some of y'all are on here. <laughs> some of y'all watching this, man. You said some shit. Maybe you're on the list. Maybe. <laughs> and anyway, what happens is it trains your brain. Sigmund Freud. He's the father of modern psychology. He said that everybody is either moving towards pleasure 
or away from pain. That's fire. I know you're thinking, damn, Brandy is such a good artist. All right, everybody's moving towards pleasure and away from pain. If you ever want to know why anybody did anything, because they thought that doing that thing would give them pleasure or they thought that not doing it would give them pain, right? Everybody's moving away from pain and towards pleasure. That's why anybody does everything. The list of hate and the list of great will change your associations with pain and pleasure. So now you'll start to get pleasure from actually doing the things you're supposed to do, working out, training hard, working on your business, you know, waking up early, studying, because you know you're shitting on the fucking haters, all right? You know you're getting one step closer to making that hoe who cheated on you cry when she sees how much you balling out here. You know what I'm saying? It's like you'll know that and you'll know that you're actually becoming the man that you need to be to accomplish your goals. What you wrote in that list of great, anytime you act in congruence with what's on that list, what's going to happen is you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to have more confidence. And over time, you're going to train your nervous system to actually enjoy the work. And then when you want to fucking bullshit your time away, play video games or do some shit that's unproductive, you'll feel bad about it because you'll know the haters are winning and you're not acting incongruent with the man that you need to be to accomplish that goal. And that's how you make actually the work more fun. You'll make it more fun. I hope everybody's getting it. That's pretty much the equation. And there's a few more things you, you can do. I'm gonna give you some extra steps. One is so there's a study that shows that procrastination is, you know, is really a problem with mood regulation. It's an emotional response. And your a lot of your emotions are tied to your amygdala, the part of your brain that's fight or flight. So what does that mean? What if you can actually change your brain chemistry to actually shrink your amygdala so you have more control over your actions and your emotions? So researchers in Germany, they did like a bunch of brain scans. They found a link between your gray matter in your brain and the volume of your amygdala and that was the study i just showed you now here's another study that shows that actually meditation this is that study i was trying to show you right basically the larger your amygdala is the less control you have over yourself so you procrastinating shit you don't have a lot of control so in order to mitigate that here's a study that shows that just eight weeks of meditation can actually change the size of your amygdala and actually change the volume so you'll be able to have more control over yourself and your actions that's one of the benefits of meditation in only eight weeks people who meditated had more self-control you get what i'm saying more self-control and that's basically procrastination is lack of self-control so you can do all the stuff i said but you can also actually change your brain with meditation and i have a whole another video on meditation if you guys want to check that out we'll put the link somewhere around so you can check it out the first thing you need to do is have more confidence in your ability to accomplish the thing and you do that by putting in the amount of effort that would make failure impossible i used to have a guitar teacher who said amateurs practice till they get it right professionals practice till they can't get it wrong right? and that's the kind of approach you need to have to your goals number two change your associations with pain and pleasure right so you actually enjoy doing the work more you do that with the list of hate and the list of great and then number three you want to actually change the biology of your brain change the structure by changing the size of your amygdala and you, the only way i know to do that is with meditation right 